Awareness by Anthony DeMello. Self-observation. The only way someone can be of help to you is in challenging your ideas. If you're ready to listen and if you're ready to be challenged, there's one thing that you can do, but no one can help you. What is this most important thing of all? It's called self-observation. No one can help you there. No one can give you a method. No one can show you a technique. The moment you pick up a technique, you're programmed again. But self-observation, watching yourself, is important. It is not the same as self-absorption. Self-absorption is self-preoccupation, where you're concerned about yourself, worried about yourself. I'm talking about self-observation. What's that? It means to watch everything in you and around you as far as possible and watch it as if it were happening to someone else. What does that last sentence mean? It means that you should not personalize what is happening to you. It means that you look at things as if you have no connection with them whatsoever. The reason you suffer from your depression and your anxiety is that you identify with them. You say, I'm depressed, but that is false. You are not depressed. If you want to be accurate, you might say, I am experiencing depression right now. But you can hardly say, I am depressed. You are not your depression. That is but a strange kind of trick of the mind, a strange kind of illusion. You have deluded yourself into thinking, though you are not aware of it, that you are your depression, that you are your anxiety, that you are your joy or your thrills that you have. I am delighted. You certainly are not delighted. Delight may be in you right now, but wait around. It will change. It won't last. It never lasts. It keeps changing. It's always changing. Clouds come and go. Some of them are black and some white. Some of them are large, others small. If we want to follow the analogy, you would be the sky, observing the clouds. You are a passive, detached observer. That's shocking, particularly to someone in the Western culture. You're not interfering. Don't interfere. Don't fix anything. Watch. Observe. The trouble with people is that they're busy fixing things they don't even understand. We're always fixing things, aren't we? It never strikes us that things don't need to be fixed. They really don't. This is a great illumination. They need to be understood. If you understand them, they'd change. Well, there you have it. So what's this all about? self-observation. So he starts by saying that you can only be helped if your ideas are challenged. It means don't hold on to your ideas too strongly. You can change your mind. You're not your ideas. One day you may say, this makes perfect sense to me, but with new information, you may change your mind, and you shouldn't stress over that. It's okay to change your mind when you get new information. It's okay to learn and grow and evolve in your thinking. Obviously, when I was younger, I thought differently than I do now. I've considered many ideas, and I've learned many things. And as I learn new things, same with you, 
we modify and evolve our thinking and our ideas. More information comes in, more ideas come in. For instance, something that comes to mind is when I was quite young, I was taught, you know, sugar and spice and everything nice about women and the Disney idea of, you know, Prince Charming on his white horse is going to come in and save the day. And me being a male, I thought that the role of Prince Charming was what I was supposed to do. I was supposed to come in and save somebody and solve all their problems and live happily ever after. But that's a fairy tale. It's not reality. It's not true. It's a story, and it's a very unrealistic story. It's like a child learning about Santa Claus. It's not real, it's not true, but that doesn't mean you throw Santa Claus away. The way I describe Santa Claus, if my kids ask me, or if anybody asks me, is Santa Claus real? Well, the way you can view Santa Claus is, yes, Santa Claus is real. He's the spirit of Christmas. He's the spirit of giving. So during the Christmas season, you're filled with this spirit of giving and you want to give. You want to partake in the whole Christmas celebration. So you could say that, yes, this is what Santa Claus is. He fills you with the spirit of giving, the spirit of Christmas, and you take on the role of Santa Claus. Or you know, you're filled with the spirit of Santa Claus. So yes, Santa Claus is real, but it's more of an abstract concept than a person who rides around in a sleigh pulled by reindeer and goes down chimneys, right? Things like that. So, you know, you don't want to lie to anybody and you don't want to trick somebody and damage them later and they have to question their whole belief structure because they were taught lies and then they had to deal with the fact that they were taught lies, they believed lies, they lived with this and then they had to deal with that and overcome it and reorganize their thinking. I mean, that's a lot of work that, you know, you put on somebody's shoulders. But you're not your thinking, you're not your ideas, and you should be open to new information so that you can let go of your old ideas if they don't serve you. Or if you've only had half the story, you know, you often hear that there's three sides to every story. There's your side, there's the opponent's side, and then there's the truth somewhere in between, and there's some truth to that. You know, it's like the story of the, depending on which version of the story you've heard, the many, several different guys who meet an elephant, several blind men. Sometimes it's three, sometimes it's five, maybe it's eight. You know, one blind man grabs the elephant's tail and he says, oh, the elephant's like a rope. The other guy grabs his leg and says, oh, the elephant's like a tree. The other guy feels the side of the elephant. And he says, oh, the elephant is like a uh, wall. The other guy grabs his tusk and says, oh, the elephant is like a, a, a branch and, a, you know, a pointy stick. And the other guy grabs the elephant's ear and he says, oh, the elephant is like, you know, a fan. And the other guy grabs the elephant's trunk and says, oh, the elephant is like a, a python. Are they wrong? No, they have their point of view. They don't have the whole picture. And with more information, they evolve their idea and hopefully when you evolve your idea it's like you get closer and closer to the truth you the more you learn the closer you get provided you have good information and good teachers and you're not trapped in some ideology or um, some false narrative, you're into an echo chamber and you're only listening to people who believe the same nonsense, very cult-like behavior. You have to beware of that. Get your information and uh, consider different ideas and use critical thought and logic and, and make up your mind for yourself. And the same with your depression or your joy or whatever. I mean, this idea that I want to be happy, let's be happy, life is about happiness. Well, that's not true. 
happiness comes and goes, just like joy comes and goes, just like depression comes and goes. You can't just fix yourself into a state of happiness. That would be insanity. That would be a, a manic state. Life's not all about happiness. Happiness is like spice that sweetens up your life or adds flavor to your life. Most of life is drudgery. Most of life is boring. Most of life is work. This, this is the, the reality of life. And you get sparks of happiness here and there. And sometimes you have sorrow. And there's another saying that, you know, if, if you didn't have sorrow, you wouldn't understand happiness. If you didn't have bad times, you wouldn't appreciate the good times. This is all part of life. But these days, people think they're supposed to be happy all the time. They go around with their phones and their computers and TikTok and different things, and they're constantly being stimulated with just stimulation, 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 and memes and funny things. And this isn't reality. This is ex escapism. This is what people do when they avoid reality and they waste their time. It's no different than an alcoholic constantly drinking, a drug addict constantly using drugs. It's, it's a trap. If you want to be happy all the time, you expect to be happy all the time, you're going to be disappointed. And this is one of the main reasons relationships fail. Relationships are like anything else. They require work. If you want to have a strong, healthy body, well, you have to eat right. That's boring. That's hard work. You have to avoid the junk food. You have to eat the food that you may not want. But if you stick with this program, you'll have a healthy body. And once in a while, you can treat yourself. But this is one of my major struggles is I have a sweet tooth. I, I can't have candy and sugar and chocolate and things in the house. I'll just eat it all the time. This is my vice. And I struggle with it. And yes, sugar is the most addictive substance in the world to a human being. So that's, that's the problem. But I counteract this by exercising. If you want strong body, you have to exercise. You don't want to. You know, it's like Muhammad Ali said. He didn't enjoy, I'm paraphrasing here, but he said something along the lines of, he never enjoyed one workout, but he wanted to be a champion. He wanted to be remembered for all time as a champion. So he forced himself to exercise. And that's the way it is for everybody. And with relationships, it's the same thing. Most of the time you're in a relationship, for instance, a marriage, it's all about cooking food, preparing food, buying groceries, doing laundry, cleaning dishes, cleaning the house, working trying to earn money, trying to keep the family together. People are sick, people are well. It's a juggling act, but there's pleasure and enjoyment here and there. But if you think it's just going to be fun and someone's going to come in and do all the work and solve all the problems and you're just going to reap all the rewards, that's not realistic. You don't want a relationship, you want a slave. And in the old days, people understood that life isn't happiness. Life isn't joy. You're not joy. You're not happiness. That's not a goal. That's not realistic. You know, you have to find balance and you have to understand that life is work and you have to accept this and hopefully find work that you can find fulfilling. But most of the time, it's going to be drudgery. But happiness comes, sadness comes, good times come, bad times come. And to enjoy the good times, you have to go through the bad times sometimes. And that's life. These days, people don't commit. They say, oh, this isn't fun. I'm leaving. Well, that's why so many marriages fail. So many relationships fail. And with apps and things, people, it's so easy to meet other people and ditch other people. And But this is toxic. This is creating many problems. It's not natural for people to live this way. So he goes on to say, um, watch everything around you and within you as far as possible, as if it were happening to somebody else. So if you see other people in these types of traps, you can see that you're, you may also be in this type of trap. And he says, um, if you identify with them, you say, I'm depressed, that's not real. The truth is you're experiencing a depression. You're like the blue sky and these clouds come and go. And if you live in a particularly cloudy place, you deal with a lot more clouds. 
you have different challenges, a tougher life you're going to be dealing with. Some of these clouds are white, some are black, some are big, some are small. They come and go. They drift through, but you're not the clouds. You're not your depression. You've deluded yourself. You believe that you are your depression. You're not. And then you believe that you are your joy. You're not. Delight may be in you right now. That means you may be happy right now, but wait a long, wait a while, and it's going to change. And you can't fix this. You just have to deal with it. You can't fix this. You can't say, oh, the goal is happiness. I'm going to be happy all the time. That's like if all you, if you love pancakes and sugar and you say, oh, your child says, I just want to eat candy all the time. I just want to eat ca cotton candy day and night, or I just want to eat pancakes three meals a day. Try that. After a couple of days, you'll never want to see a pancake again. Anyway, food for thought, something to think about. And, uh, yeah. Anyway, who loves your baby? This guy. Till next time, bye. Don't forget, you're somebody's favorite person out there, probably mine. We are going through tough times, but let's hang on and hope these clouds pass and we'll be in the blue skies again for long. We are the blue sky, but sometimes we get wrapped up in this idea that, you know, it's just too many clouds. But hopefully these dark days will pass and uh, hopefully you enjoy spending some time with me and I enjoy spending time with you and we can help each other through these difficult times. So, till next time, love you, goodbye.